Hey guys, Steve from PC Budget Solutions here, and first of all, I want to thank you guys very much. You guys absolutely loved my Ryzen 5 overclock video versus KB Lake i5. So, I'm going to take it one step further. You guys kept saying how KB Lake can overclock past 4.5. So, let's look at 4.8 gigahertz on a KB Lake system. My Ryzen 5 system topped out at 4 gigahertz. Let's put them head to head, and let's see if these results change at all. Same test benches as before, GTX 1080s, same boards as I've used this entire time. Here are my settings, 4000 megahertz frequency for the Ryzen chip at 1.4 volts. And on the KB Lake system, I went with a 48 core ratio at 1.35 volts. Now, my test methodology is the same. I have five Chrome tabs open, including YouTube. YouTube's not playing anything. I have CPU-Z, I have EVGA Precision, and I have HW Monitor. Those are running the background with the respected launchers for the games, but only one launcher at a time and fraps. So let's take a look. Let's see how well these two systems do overclocked as far as I can get them. I wanted to bring back WoW because I knew this was gonna favor KB Lake in this scenario. So basically I try to make it easier by taking as much load off the GPU as I possibly could. 1080p level 8 settings, VSync off, full screen window, that's it. And the KB Lake system did perform better. We're probably talking about 10% margin of victory uh, going one way and around 6 or 7% margin of victory heading the other way. I kind of expected this, especially with overclocking the CPU, it was really going to shine due to its just higher raw frequency. Now, let's take a look at For Honor and see how that one turned out. So in this benchmark, they're both very, very, very close. On high settings, the KB Lake system squeaked out a couple percentage points, but on ultra settings, they were so close. I would suspect in this situation, if I ran a benchmark three, four, five, six, seven times and averaged them, they would pretty much be dead even. So this one didn't surprise me. Let's go ahead and take a look at Ghost Recon Wildlands. There's some interesting things that popped up there. Another win for the KB Lake chip. On high settings, right around 10%. On ultra settings, right around 6 or 7%. Kind of didn't surprise me here either, just due to the raw clock speed of the KB Lake system, 800 megahertz faster versus our previous setup, which was about, what, 500 megahertz faster? 5 to 600. So let's take a look at Ashes of the Singularity, because that's really going to be an interesting test for you guys to look at. In the CPU test, the Ryzen chip won. One to two FPS, it made a small gain, and the KB Lake system made a fair bit larger gain because it went up by 300 megahertz versus only 100 megahertz. So it doesn't surprise me, but obviously the Ryzen chip did win this one and squeaked out a small victory. Something interesting happened in the next benchmark, so let's take a look at that real quick. So in this test, somehow the KB Lake system won, and the reason why I'm a little bit confused on this one is the Ryzen chip won the CPU test and I'm running the same graphics card. I ran this test several times and the highest performing chart is what I took for the KB Lake system. And that last run, it went a fair bit higher, like two or three FPS, but I wanted to put that on the graph. So I don't know if this is more of an anomaly or if it was just luck. So I think a little bit more tests needs to be done, run these benchmarks five, 10 times each and average them. But I want you guys to see some graphs I have up next. And I think this will really, really help you with your decisions going down the line here. This graph is interesting because I put the KB Lake chip at 100% because obviously the Ryzen chip fell behind. It fell behind on average 4.83% across all the tests that I did. So we're talking a 4% variance. At around 60 FPS, we're talking around a 2 to 3 FPS difference, if that's what you guys are shooting for. Even at a, even if you double that to 120 FPS, 4% is a 4 to 5% FPS difference. Is that really worth what you're giving up with less threads and less cores? But there's still more to the story. So what's interesting about this particular graph is I put down the cost per frame. So what I did is I took the cost of the chip plus the exact same board. So I didn't use my cheapest Z270 board. I went with the ASRock Z270 Pro 4 because I have the ASRock B350 Pro 4. 
So that total came to $343 versus $308. I averaged all the frame rates across the board, and then I obviously divide by the cost, and the Ryzen chip came out about 50 cents less per frame, which is kind of interesting. So let's take a look at the very last one here, and I think this is going to shed some light on where I'm getting at with this particular chip. This last chart is frames per gigahertz. Very simple. I took the frame rate divided by the gigahertz. So what this tells us is for every one gigahertz, the Ryzen chip will post about 20.55 FPS in my testing. Obviously there's a lot of games out there, but apples to apples, the 7600K actually pulled almost three frames per second less. That is almost a 15% difference, clock for clock. So that's the big thing here is clock speed. We saw roughly a 4% margin difference but the clock speed difference was roughly like 16 or 17 percent. So at the same speed, the Ryzen chip should prevail. We won't be able to know this until probably Ryzen 2 against Canon Lake, whatever else is coming down the line. But I think this really proves that even in the worst case scenario, Ryzen's holding its own. It's a great choice. It's a great cost. And... You know, I did this for you guys, and I hope this really sheds some light for what you guys were asking about. So, guys, conclusion time. So, I did this video because you guys were asking for it. KB Lake can obviously go past 4.5 gigahertz, no surprise there. So, 4.8 gigahertz, it did strike out a little bit of a win over my Ryzen chip. But, what this tells us is Ryzen 2 coming down the road, what, a year and a half, two years? We don't know what the cycle is with AMD right now. But clock for clock, Ryzen's outperforming. So if I can get the Ryzen chip to like 4.3, it's going to beat the KB Lake system. Mind you, no memory overclock yet, at least not for me, unfortunately. So hopefully Intel starts getting their butts in gear because AMD has a really solid chip that's performing within 5% of their flagship mid $200 CPU, and it has two more cores and eight more threads. It's a lot better multitasker. So thank you guys for tuning in. If you liked it, obviously liked it. If you disliked it, do that, but leave a comment section below about what you didn't like and how I can improve. In the comment section, everything we have in here, you can find links to. You can uh, check that stuff out. If you guys have any questions, definitely let us know. But this is Steve from PC Budget Solutions. Thank you guys very much, and I'll see you guys later on down the road.